Obstacle avoidance is an essential topic for self-driving vehicles. In this discussion, we often hear the word LiDAR. These devices recently got cheaper and affordable for many makers. But are they worth your money for obstacle avoidance? Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Let's first define the problem. Obstacle avoidance means that a vehicle must not collide with any other vehicle or obstacle. Simple. Please do not mix obstacle avoidance with simultaneous localization and mapping or SLAM. These are two different things. An obstacle avoidance system has to create a stop signal to avoid damage. The purpose of a SLAM system is more to optimize the path. Which objects around our vehicle are obstacles which have to be avoided? Let's take our tank. We need to be able to detect all barriers from the surface up to maybe 30 centimeters. From left to right, we need about 50 centimeters. And how far we have to be able to detect obstacles? This distance depends on the speed of our vehicle and its braking distance. For a tank, this is only a few centimeters. For a drone, it can be 50 meters, and for a car, even more. So for obstacle avoidance for our tank, we need to know the distance to everything in this cubicle. And if we only want to drive forward automatically, we do not need to watch back. So our problem is very similar to the issue of James Bond at this moment. Goodbye, Mr. Bond. I trust you had a pleasant fright. <laughs> Now the problem is defined and we can go on and see if LiDAR is the solution. I tested fixed LiDAR systems in an earlier video. You should find the link in the top right corner of your screen. They can measure distance in one direction and for sure were not able to fulfill the task. And now DF Robot sends me this cool RP LiDAR A1 which costs around $100 for a test. It rotates typically seven times per second and measures the distance continuously in all directions. A massive improvement over the fixed LiDARs. It uses a laser beam and triangulation to measure the distance to an object. So let's give this device a simple task. I connect it with a FTDI adapter to my PC and start the software which comes with it. As a first test, I put the LiDAR in a box. What does it see? A rectangle, of course. Nice. And if we move the sensor, the square moves too. Only if one of the walls get closer than about 15 centimeters or 6 inches, the LiDAR does not see it anymore, because it is blind on short distances. So the LiDAR works and does exactly what we expect. It sees all obstacles around it with high speed and precision. And because we know all walls, we could calculate the size of the room or plan for an optimized route which covers every inch of an area. Very good for a cleaning robot. With some math, we even could calculate the movement of the robot relative to these walls. This is very usable for SLAM. But is it also good for obstacle avoidance? One question could be, is it capable of detecting small obstacles like this 0.8 mm thick ruler? Yes, it does on short distance, but not always, as we see. Still astonishing, the angle which is covered by this ruler is only 0.25 degrees. You can imagine that quite a lot of data is created by this device. In standard configuration, it measures 200 points per rotation, makes 200 times 7 equals 1400 measurements per second. The time between two values, therefore, is only 700 microseconds. So the loop of your sketch must not take more than 700 microseconds, which is not a lot. An Arduino, in general, is too slow for that. In reality, the things are a little bit more complex. Maybe the room is long and your robot drives in parallel to a wall. Fixed LiDARs or ultrasonic sensors would not detect this wall. 
Why is that? Because both need a reflected signal to measure distance. A wall reflects the beam in another direction, not back to the receiver and is therefore not detectable. By the way, this is one reason why stealth bombers are invisible for radar systems. They use surfaces which do not reflect the beam back to the radar station, they reflect it in other directions. This is why the first stealth plane looked so strange. For our purpose, however, this effect is terrible. Because parallel walls are invisible to fixed lidars as well as ultrasonic sensors, our vehicle collides in such situations with the wall. How does our new 360 degrees lidar behave in this situation? This is how it sees a parallel wall. It is also invisible to him at a certain distance. But it is clearly visible on short ranges because the laser is reflected. A clear advantage over the two other concepts. It protects from all obstacles from left to right. But what happens if we have a small obstacle laying on the floor? Or a hanging obstacle? The laser beam is very narrow and only covers one plane. This is why it is called 2D LiDAR. To show you this effect I move the box a little over this measuring plane. It becomes completely invisible to our LiDAR. So we are not safe at all for hanging obstacles if our laser is lower than the highest point, which is always the case. Because we do not need the LiDAR working behind us, we can tilt it a little and now we see hanging obstacles which can become dangerous for us. Like that we protect it the top. But it does no more see small obstacles which lay on the floor. This is one reason I selected a tank. So no problem. Our tank is not stopped by such small barriers. But this is not a real situation. We have to stop also for small barriers. To solve this problem we could tip our lidar to the other direction. Of course hanging obstacles would be a problem again. A typical dilemma. Which cannot be solved with our 2D lidar. This is the reason why LiDARs on self-driving cars are three-dimensional with several beams which give results on several levels. But these devices still are costly. I found such 3D radars which cost less than $1000, but they only cover an angle of 130 degrees which might not be sufficient to deal with the wall problem from before and 9 degrees vertically is also quite small. The next problem, if we want to drive fast, the reach of our LiDAR can become an issue. The range in the specifications of our RP LiDAR A1 is 0.15 to 6 meters. We already tested the shortest distance. So let's examine the long distance at our usual location in the garage which is indoors with low light levels. The walls are grey and I put the lidar on the floor, precisely at 6 meters from the wall. And indeed it shows results. We see the walls and also the motorcycle, which by the way is not mine. So the specifications are met. If I only move a few centimeters back we lose the signal. So this device can be used by reasonable fast vehicles at least if they have good brakes. The last question which can be asked is not relevant for obstacle avoidance. How accurate is it? This box measures 43 times 35 centimeters. The LiDAR measures 41 times 35 which is a little short. And you see the value fluctuates around 2 to 3 millimeters. The specifications say it should be able to measure below 0.5 mm, which is definitely not true in standard mode. If we change to stability mode, we get this stability. The accuracy, however, is more or less the same. The last obstacle is if the road suddenly disappears. Then the vehicle would fall. This obstacle cannot be detected by all sensors we discussed so far. Cleaning robots typically have an IR diode pointing to the floor. As soon as it is no more reflected, the robot stops. 
For fast moving devices, this is a severe problem because most cars are damaged by quite shallow holes in a road. Summarized, the RP LiDAR is a neat device and it fulfills its specifications. It is a 2D LiDAR and can detect walls and obstacles in one plane. It is very good for SLAM applications. For obstacle avoidance, it has a clear advantage over fixed LiDARs or ultrasonic sensors because it detects barriers in a much wider range and can avoid collisions with walls. Its spatial resolution is excellent and it can detect an obstacle of 0.8 mm or 0.25 degrees on short distances. However, it is not sufficient for small things laying on the floor or low-hanging obstacles because it only measures in two dimensions. It creates tons of data, so your sketch has to be quite fast to cope with this speed. Maybe you even need a subsystem only for obstacle detection. All in all, it is a massive improvement over fixed LiDAR systems and an improvement over ultrasonic sensors. What can we do? A combination of such a LiDAR with an ultrasonic sensor pointing in the driving direction would keep all the advantages of the LiDAR plus would avoid the problem of small obstacles. Ultrasonic devices have an opening angle of about 30 degrees. A cheap system consisting of at least five ultrasonic sensors would most probably be better for obstacle avoidance. I built once one with three sensors covering about 90 degrees, but this sensor was not capable of solving the long wall problem. For that we have to cover 180 degrees. A 2D LiDAR definitely is not a solution. This is the ugly truth, even if manufacturers try to advertise it for that purpose. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.